Have you built your first ever build or are you planning to build one? Here are 10 common ways you could ruin your build or even kill your PC. Let's get started. But before, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. It's completely free for you, but it helps me a ton. The first way to ruin your PC is by buying a CPU that is not compatible with your motherboard. If you've already built some PCs by yourself, you may think this is a rookie mistake. You always need to check the socket of the CPU and the motherboard to make sure it's compatible. Oh gosh, look at my nose. You can see I've got a cold. But not only that. You also need to check if the exact generation of the processor you're buying is compatible out of the box with your mobile or if you need to make any sort of BIOS update and if you need to make one you need a CPU just to start up the motherboard and make the BIOS update so keep that in mind. Usually it's clearly labeled on the mobile but if you have any sort of doubt you can always google if your mobile can be paired with your CPU or you can comment down below and I'll make sure that your parts all are compatible and also if there's a better deal for you. Error number two, buying a bomb, I mean <laughs> a bad PSU. You may think that it's okay to chip out a little bit on your power supply. Every one of them does the exact same thing, right? Wrong! There are good power supplies and bad ones. How can you know which is which? First off, if you find a thousand watts PSU that costs only 50 euros, it most likely uses bad capacitors and bad parts that, in rare cases, might even explode. Oh. When I was into crypto mining, I remember buying a 1300 watt server PSU for like 60 euros on eBay used, and the result was that it exploded. Nothing so fancy as you may think, and no fire at all, but I scared myself to death. If your PSU has an 80 plus bronze certification and an extended warranty for more than like 5 years, those are a good sign that it might be a good one. But if you want to be 100% but if you want to be 100% sure, I would recommend something from either Seasonic, Be Quiet, Corsair, Cooler Master or other reputable brands. Once again, if you have any doubt, leave a comment down below and I'll help you out. Error number three, buying PC parts that will bottleneck. This is a little bit more complicated to explain, but imagine you buy a Ferrari, you spend a shit ton of money on it, but decide to chip out on the wheels and buy the pneumatics from your local discount store. The driving experience will be garbage. Not because of the Ferrari, but because of the wheels you picked up. If you buy a SIG 3080 Ti, you can't pair it with a Nitri 12100 or an i7 6700 because it's an i7, it's okay. You will run in a bottleneck, which means you won't benefit from all the horsepower of your GPU because the CPU just can't keep up with all that data. A good reference to avoid bottlenecks is the price. Don't pair a 100 euros CPU with a 1000 euros GPU. Error number 4. Buying RGB stuff if you're on a budget. I know not everyone will agree, but if you're on a tight budget and look for performance rather than aesthetic, you can always add a couple of RGB fans or RGB strips later on and the result will still look good. But you will have saved enough money so that your parts are better than the RGB counterparts. Error number 5. Buying a heatsink that is not compatible with your socket. This is a classic and many people forget to check the compatibility between your cooler and your socket. Many coolers will have it written in the article, but if not, look for compatible sockets. If you've already bought it and you found out it's not compatible, you can simply buy a bracket that will fix the problem. This is an, not a huge issue, but it will slow down your PC building. Error number 6. Watch out for static electricity. You may kill your PC with your finger. If you're not aware of this, your body can be slightly electrically charged. 
And if you touch a PC part, such as the motherboard or your RAM, and shoot it to the ground, there's the possibility of killing your components. It's very rare. You can check the LTT video with Electroboom, where they actually try to kill PC parts with a static electricity. But the solution to avoid this problem is simple. Before building your PC, touch something connected to the ground, such as a radiator, like the one to eat your house, not the PC one, or connect your PSU to an electrical plug and touch the PSU. That way, you will ground yourself. Error number seven. Buying tech parts you can't benefit from. This is something similar to the bottleneck. If you have a motherboard with only PCIe Gen 3 connectors, it's pretty useless to buy a GPU that uses PCIe Gen 5 or a Gen 4 NVMe SSD, because you won't benefit from all the power. If you want to check out more about the difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, you can check out my video right here, you will love it. The only exception is if you're planning to upgrade your motherboard, in that case you can buy newer parts knowing that you'll soon benefit from them. Error number 8. This is not strictly related to your build but rather to your setup. Set a budget also for your desk, your monitor, your chair and your speakers. Many times you may forget about those things. With my first setup I completely did and end up having a great 1500 euros PC with a $10 microscopic desk and a 10 year old monitor and with no speakers whatsoever. You can find here my current standing desk and chair, I highly recommend them, but the important thing is to keep in mind that you will actually spend all the time that you're at your PC on your chair and at your desk so make sure those are ergonomic. Error number 9. Make sure to use the right cables. If you have a 144Hz 4K display make sure to use a 1.4 DisplayPort cable else you won't get all the benefits from it. The same thing for your Ethernet. If you've got a 1 gigabit per second connection, make sure to use a CAT5E or 6 or greater cable. If you still use a CAT5, you will get a bottleneck and you'll be stuck at 100 megabytes per second max. Error number 10, the last one. Keep yourself within your budget. If you've set a budget, that's probably a good reason behind it. So don't feel forced to buy top tier components, especially if you don't work with them and as you don't need them. If you end up making components lists and being over budget, you can always opt for lower end parts or used parts. That's a great way to save some money and still get the best performances out of your build. If you're still here, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so that you won't miss any future video like this one. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week at this same hour on this same channel. Ciao!